everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace on an epic photo challenge in Patagonia. I'm in Puerto Rio Tranquilo here and it's uh, the weather has kicked up significantly. And on this photo challenge, if you haven't seen the previous video, make sure you watch that. It's about failing forward, learning how to do things we're not really competent at doing. That's what I'm doing in Patagonia. Asking you to teach me how to do some things I don't know how to do. The first challenge was to shoot the Milky Way against some really amazing mountains. But I learned that I didn't plan ahead far enough. I didn't anticipate the drastic weather changes. I can't shoot the Milky Way because as I was riding down here on Route 7, it's a beautiful road. Everything looked spectacular, but the weather changed significantly really quickly. And now there is cloudy skies for days, for about 10 days. So that is out, but I have a deadline. I need to get a video to Adorama TV and I'm already late doing that. So I'm going to have to do something different for this video. I'm going to try to shoot some glaciers, some ice caves in glaciers. But let me just sort of show you what happened for me to get to this point where I am right now. My trip began just south of Puerto Montt, Chile, along the Carretera Austral, a road that winds to the heart of Chilean Patagonia. I headed south to Koyaiki to meet Eileen Martinez. Eileen is a fellow world traveler and a native of Patagonia. She agreed to be my guide and riding partner on the off-road sections of the route. The weather was perfect until I arrived in Koyaiki. Well, I'm on the quest to find the perfect location. There's been some setbacks. The uh, starry night photo that I wanted to shoot is not possible because all well, the weather has changed dramatically right when I was ready to start shooting at night. And so that's the first big fail. But to my advantage, I have a guide here in Patagonia. Her name is Aileen, come in here. Um, and so here she is. Hi everybody. She has been all over the uh, Americas on her motorcycle. It's right behind us here and she is from Patagonia and so she's showing me different places. So because I can't shoot the starry night and the Milky Way, the things that I wanted to shoot, uh, Eileen has a, an alternative and that is a glacier where maybe we can walk through some ice tunnels and shoot some really cool things. And so we're gonna have to go to plan B because plan A didn't work and that is the first failure that I have learned in this epic photo challenge and that is my planning wasn't good enough. I didn't get here early enough. I should have looked at the weather and I've seen that uh, I had a few days of good weather and then an entire, uh, I don't know, five or 10 days of really bad weather. So I missed it. So we're gonna have to go to plan B because I can't shoot the starry night next week and still make the production schedule for Adorama TV. So we're gonna still scout and today hit the glacier and hopefully get a photo that's awesome. We left early in the morning and rode south along the Carretera Austral until we reached Puerto Rio Tranquilo. We're at the base of where the glacier expeditions begin. However, the permitting uh, is required so we can ride there get to the glacier but to hike in and do the photos that I want to do we have to have a permit and you can only get a permit from a company this is Pancho with El Puesto Expediciones El Puesto Expediciones there you go <laughs> he has found us some permits but for tomorrow which is actually great because it's not going to be too rainy and so thank you so much for your help he's our savior today well now you're caught up with the journey down here and what's happened you can tell that it's super windy i'm trying to block the microphone from the wind but tomorrow morning eileen and i are headed to the glaciers we're going to be walking through those i'm going to try to create some new and interesting photos with unusual point of view with some color contrast maybe some backlight we're going to try it and see what happens it's an unexpected photo challenge so join me and we're going to do that right now we were up before sunrise the next day we drove two hours along a bumpy dirt road to reach the trailhead all right we are at base camp and so now uh 
We've got all the safety gear ready to go. It's gonna be chilly, but um, I'm not sure how long of a hike it is. I think about an hour or two just to get there, and then hopefully I'll be starting to shoot some of the ice caves and things. So we're all outfitted, time to go. We hiked for about two hours to reach the glacier. Once we were there, we attached crampons to our shoes. And for safety reasons, we were not allowed to shoot video or take photos while we were moving. Well, we've reached the very first ice cave that's right behind us. Uh, we're going in groups with a guide. And uh, so I don't know how uh, wide or how small these caves are. So I'm not sure which lens to bring. And because uh, of safety restrictions, I can only bring my camera and whatever lens is attached. So this first one, I'm gonna try with a 35 millimeter lens and see what the light looks like and see what kind of uh, framing and, and sort of composition I can get. Well, I'm inside this uh, ice cave here. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of light, but my 35 millimeter lens is just not wide enough. So at the second cave, I'm gonna switch over to a 21 millimeter because there's some really cool uh, ice melting and some really cool blue stuff. I just can't get it with this lens. It needs to be much, much wider. So I'm learning some things, we're failing forward. So now we're gonna march, uh, I don't know, another kilometer or two to the next one of these and try again. While we were hiking from the first ice cave to the second, I took the opportunity to stop along the glacier and shoot some photos. I set my camera to f8 and focused at hyperfocal distance. I was using a 21 millimeter lens. To get a more interesting photo, I got much closer to the ground. This created a bit more foreground interest, which pulls us into the photograph. Once inside the next ice cave, I had to work very, very fast. We were with the tour group and I only had a few minutes to shoot by myself. So I looked for as many different ways to shoot the cave as possible. I stuck with my 21 millimeter lens and for the most part I shot at a hyperfocal distance that ensured I got from the very beginning to the very end of the shot in focus. And I looked for different ways to compose the shot. I got really down low to the ground, I shot up into the sky. I looked for different little vignettes of images inside this one cave. I shot vertical shots as well as horizontal shots. I just tried to make the most of the few minutes I had inside the cave. And here are my results. Well, this photo challenge did not go the way I anticipated. Remember, I set out to shoot the Milky Way at night in Patagonia, but that didn't happen because of cloud cover and rain and drastic weather changes. So the first thing I learned was be better at planning and making sure you look at the weather down the road. Uh, but despite that, there was some success. And so I looked for a different opportunity. I couldn't shoot the Milky Way, but there was a glacier just down the road. And so I was able to hike in and shoot that. Now I've never shot a glacier before, but I was able to apply some of my past photography experience to that glacier, specifically that first ice cavern. I wanted to shoot with a 35 millimeter lens. It's sort of a go-to lens. It's very small. I thought that would work out, but I discovered it wasn't wide enough. And so I put this lens on. This is a 21 millimeter lens. And as soon as I did that, something clicked in the back of my mind. And I remembered some former scenic photography, specifically shooting at hyperfocal. So F8, manually focusing to hyperfocal. That makes sure that everything from the very closest to the very farthest thing is in focus. And that really was magical for that glacier because I got really everything from the beginning to the end in focus and that brought that to life. When I got to the second ice cave that also worked. I made sure to get some unusual point of view getting down low, getting up high, pointing to the sky. All of that worked out. But the other thing that I didn't anticipate was I began to shoot as a street photographer. 
because we were not allowed to shoot any video or stills when we were hiking because there were deep crevasses and so we didn't want to slip off and it, you could die and so we were not allowed to do anything that helped uh, got our eyes off the trail and so uh, what I was allowed to do was just to put my camera around my neck like it is right now. And because I was at hyperfocal, I was shooting like I do sometimes street photography, where without looking at my camera, I was just sort of uh, taking photos and shooting the group hiking in front of me, shooting to the side. And that way I didn't take my eye off the trail. I wasn't in danger, but I still got some great photos. So I applied street photography to a glacier ice shoot. I did not anticipate that at all. I also learned that I need to make sure I pack better. There are a lot of technical things that I didn't realize I needed to put in my backpack. Crampons and gaiters and water and first aid and food and all kinds of stuff. And so uh, as soon as all that was packed in, that came from the, the tour company, well, my camera was at the very bottom. So to try to dig in there and get all that stuff out, it made it really slow to change lenses or to do anything. And so I would get a different bag the next time I do this, something with two different compartments, one for the camera and one for all my other stuff. And so that was a lesson that was learned. I think this was a great failing forward experience. And don't worry, I am gonna shoot the Milky Way in Patagonia. I'm just gonna have to wait about 10 days for the, eye, the, uh, the skies to clear to be able to do that. But I'm still gonna do that challenge here on Adorama TV. So the key is make sure you're following me on Instagram because as soon as I get to Wi-Fi, if it's re uh, available where I am, I'm uploading sort of the failures and successes of each day as I'm traveling through Patagonia. I'm asking you for your advice to help me learn how to do things so I can fail forward and uh, that way we can communicate and everybody grows as a community. So make sure you're following me on Instagram. Also, make sure you subscribe to Adorama TV. We're posting new videos almost every single day by all kinds of great photographers. Make sure you turn on the bell so you get notifications when we have new stuff. And then I will see you next time.